I don't think there are too many people who just sort of decide, hey, I want to be a community college president. What skill set do you bring? What experiences do you have? It's overwhelming to become, in my mind, a president um, and to know that the first things that you want to do is become familiar with the people and with the organization. What is your vision for Cosumnes River College? I, mean, I think the feeling I want to inv invoke when I leave our people to think of, the word that comes to mind is, is courage. I, mean, I, I want to be viewed as someone that had the courage to do something differently for the sake of our students achieving a level of success that we haven't seen before. I feel comfortable now, let's have a conversation about what you desire potentially in your next president and what I might bring to this environment and could we together shape a better future. about the fact that uh, previous influences can uh, have some impact on the way you carry out your assigned responsibilities. I had been very fortunate before I arrived here as president of this college in having, as you might say, worked my way through the ranks. When I had joined the, the area, American River College, in 1958, some 13 years earlier, I joined that college as a member of the classified staff. And you know, grew up uh, you know, tra traditional Mexican household, Catholic household, first generation, uh, Spanish speaking household. So the notion of education and the support for it from immigrant parents who worked in factories was powerful. It was instilled uh, as, as a responsibility. So I think, I think about that now as a very formative part of my life. I uh, didn't start out in higher education, didn't start out in education at all. Um, when I finished my master's degree in business administration, I went into the corporate world. My husband and I decided that we wanted to move out of a very high urban area and get away from so much um, busyness and pace and traffic and went to work for College of the Siskiyous uh, when I made that move. So a very big change. So that was very serendipitous. It just happened to be that way. I, I grew up in uh a family that just value tradition, right? Um, they value the idea of being there and being of service to others. So my parents were raised in the South. And you know, with the South, there's a certain culture tradition that comes with that, right? And that culture, a tradition is based around, around church, <laughs> it's based around family, and it's based around the idea of of giving back. I mean, the simple notion of being there for your neighbor. And so education was infused within all of those values as, as well. Um, and so it was really natural for me, one, to value education. And now looking back on it, it really made sense that I would go into education uh, pro professionally. Is uh, the epitome of uh, what teaching is about to uh, to leave the presidency and to uh, 
return and say in the classroom where, uh, where the, the true meaning of education really belongs uh, is something that uh, we, we think of when we think of Oliver Durand and uh, how this college got started. He was so kind and so considerate, so quiet and calm. Oliver was one of the nicest guys you ever met. He ended up teaching English and his office was right next to mine after that. Oliver was the consummate gentleman. He was a very soft-spoken, calm individual, one of my favorite people here. When I remember his leadership style, I think that there was a sober seriousness and a desire to avoid the extremes and to find consensus. I think that that was, was an important mark of the age and I think one that helped produce a great deal of the beautiful experiences we had in as we developed the CRC sense of what shared governance is, of how we would work together and treat one another, which I never felt anywhere exactly the same as here. It's when Doug Burris became president, and he became sort of my mentor. The first year he came, he didn't do a thing, he, he did the smart thing. He just didn't make any changes at all. He just watched for a year. Upon my arrival, there were about 1,700 students enrolled. Physical facilities, of course, we, uh, we had just opened the year before and uh, had completed about half of what was to be the total campus. We were still hiring faculty, and uh, that was top priority, getting the kinds of people that we felt would relate well to students. My first year here was an outstanding experience. People welcomed me and we had a, an opportunity to bring, uh, uh, begin some of the things that are now uh, here with us today. Uh, in 1990, uh, this one you'll like, I bet you can't guess what that is. That's dirt, it's berm dirt, okay? Uh, if you look out at the community bowl uh, out here, that all used to be circled uh, with dirt. Well, we sold the dirt. <laughs> that was a tough financial year. <laughs> you wanna know what happened to that berm dirt? My office is sitting in it. Okay, and so is the bookstore and, and uh, the addition onto the cafeteria. So you see, it, we are, we're very creative at CRC. The reason I applied for this presidency was because I liked at the time what the college was saying about itself. And I had been on the campus before. I liked the ability to be able to come to the campus and walk the whole campus and interact with students. You know, when you look at this campus, it really represents the whole community. And that I have always appreciated, and we worked hard to make sure that that happened. I get an opportunity right in this job to, um, you know, go to a variety of different meetings, interact with people in you know, the college. And when I say I work at CRC, people always have a positive res response. Cosumnes River College was a great place that needed to have more light uh, and attention on it. That is, to sort of come out a little bit more. Uh, but there was a sense that, hey, the south part of Sacramento is growing, Elk Grove is growing. How can a community college serve the needs of this growing community? There were areas clearly that CRC had excelled with that particular vision and with their mission of serving students. And there were areas that still needed to be worked on. So I think over time, that's what I did, is I embraced the mission that had been identified by all of the community members here, faculty, staff, everyone, um, and then tried to find my place of where I had strengths to help reach some of those goals. If I had to draw a common thread to the different stories that I heard and had to boil it down to one word, um, that word would be opportunity, that we gave people a chance, right? A chance when they couldn't go away to college, 
or a chance when they were raising a uh, raising a family and they needed to take one class and they, they need, or they needed to be retra retrained because they lost a job, right? We gave them a chance, we gave them opportunity. Um, and so I think for the community that we represent ourselves as the opportunity center for our area. The dream business. Yeah, I think as, 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 as presidents, uh, uh, we're chief opportunity officers. And so we have to make sure that the opportunity is uh, available to everyone. My involvement with education has been a tremendous reward. I've never looked at a day that I didn't feel that something good was going to happen and I was able to provide some service. And uh, it's been a privilege to me. And I think that we should guard our educational system and be sure that we can sustain what we're doing because, in my opinion, education is uppermost in the development of uh, individuals, the economic development, and just the general um, quality of life. And I think we have that important role, and we should guard it jealously. Memories for CRC get fonder as I get older. <laughs> I remember going to the Kasumnas Journal readings and having the students pour out their creative voices, their visions of where they wanted to head, their angst. Uh, going to the Patrons Club lunches, I loved it. I just flat out loved it. The patrons were just beautiful. They loved this place. And of course, you know me, they, they would pull in my cheek and have a little more cake and try my cookies. Yes, yes, yes. It, what's not to love? I love the math integration bee. And yet, I'm an English major. You know that, right? I didn't know what they were doing. But there was such a way that the faculty and the students interact that just made me so proud. And those, those are the types of things I remember. I can tell you the two favorite days of the year was opening day, um, seeing all the students come in. Um, I always enjoyed that day. It just, uh, it meant a whole lot to me to be able to see all the new uh, faculty, all the new staff come in and then all of these students um, uh, and graduation. Uh, that was a real, uh, pleasure. And I was just walking out of my office, heading to a Wednesday manager meeting. Customer, often the students come in, I may hold the hold the door, uh, but it was an older woman, right? She, she wouldn't let me open the door. She stopped, and I was, I was like, no, please come in. She said, no, I'm gonna wait. So I walked out, and she said, you know, are you the college president? I've been waiting to meet you. I said, yes, ma'am. How can I help you? She said, well, I'm a I'm a student. I'm a first time freshman. At say, let's say 77 years old, I'm a first time freshman. I saw your picture in the library and I just been wanting to meet you and to thank you for this opportunity to be able to go to college. That stuck with me. That was one of those moments where it seems like the world pauses. Behind all of that is this deep connection to this place called Kasundas River that I saw and I cherished and then others invested in us. Uh, so this, those, those are the fond things, but there's nothing that uh, you know tickled me more than on commencement day and distributing diplomas and whatnot. That's that's the that's that for me, um, and they're all unique. And because to that student, that diploma said it was an affirmation of strength, an affirmation of courage, an affirmation of intelligence. So it's pretty powerful. Oh, 25 years from now when people do a history of our institution, that they will look at this time period that we are in now and be able to say that the reason that our college is having the level of success, all the notoriety, our students are getting placed, that our institution is viewed as the preeminent institution of community colleges in the nation, that will look at this period and say that this was the time that made that happen. 
that the college exercise a level of courage and tenacity and willingness to do hard work that made all of the difference for the future of our institution.